Hi everyone, I'm Terry Quinn, Chief Executive of the Bowling Street Foundation. I'm speaking to you from Florida, USA. I'm over here on a mission trip to try and tell the American people about the great discovery of the Bowling Street mission. We have already been interviewed by the Charisma magazine, which is the biggest selling magazine in America. We are so excited about this. They videoed my interview with Dr. Roy Hartham, who played piano for Smith Wigglesworth many, many years ago. But the breaking news is this. On my visit, led by the Holy Spirit, and in my discussions with Dr. Roy Hartham, we have appointed him as International Ambassador for the Bowling Street Mission. I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Roy. He's going to tell you a little bit about his background. Listen, we have such an amazing man of God on board. So listen to this. Dr. Roy, Terry, welcome aboard. What a pleasure, what I'm, a pleasure. I'm glad you've come aboard, Roy. Well, thank you from the bottom of our heart for what you're going to give to the Foundation. Tell us a bit about your background, Roy, and about how you came to play the piano for yes. Smith Wigglesworth. I'm both honoured and humbled, Terry, to be a part of this ministry. Amen. There were very few of us left who actually knew him, and I had the privilege not only of knowing him personally, but to be part of his ministry when he came to my hometown in Stoke-on-Trent. My father and he were close friends, and uh, I was a young teenager. My father and I would pick him up every night, take him to the meeting, take him home, take him out to eat. And I was the pianist for those crusades, so I had a front row seat to see the miracles night after night after night. Briefly, my background, I was born in Stoke-on-Trent, 1927. My father was one of the pioneers of the Pentecostal movement. And uh, I had the privilege as a teenager of chauffeuring such greats as Smith Wigglesworth, Howard Carter, Donald G., Harold Horton, some of the greats of the pioneer movement of the Pentecostal movement in Great Britain. I remember as a young boy, my father took me to the home of Rhys Howells, who wrote the book on intercession, which is now a classic. From there we went to the home of Evan Roberts, the great Welsh revivalist. I've traveled the world with Youngie Cho in the interest of church growth. I've pastored, I came to America in 1949 after serving as an officer in the British Army. I felt God was calling me to America and everything we've done, I've been highly favored of God. Mm. Every church we've pastored has exploded numerically. 1970, we came to Orlando, a very strict legalistic Pentecostal church where the people, that the women could not wear powder <laughs> and sing, I don't mean makeup, powder and sing in the choir. If the women had short sleeves, it was so legalistic, they could not sing in the choir. God helped us to break that spirit. It was a spirit of legalistic yeah. bondage. Mm -hmm. And the church began to grow from 200 plus to 1,000, 2,000, till finally we had over 7,000 people Every week who came, we had to have five identical services every Sunday to accommodate the crowd. Wow. Out of that ministry, Charisma Magazine was born, which is now the largest magazine in the world. We pioneered three television stations in Central Florida, all of which are going with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So I've had such a rich heritage. But getting back to Smith Wigglesworth, yeah. there are interesting, inspiring, and humorous stories that I could share with you. Number one, my mother-in-law, who was a converted opera singer in London, she was the soloist for Smith Wigglesworth when he preached in the Crusades in London. And on one occasion, somebody died while Smith Wigglesworth was preaching. And as you know, there are how many people raised in the dead, Terry? 23, I believe. 23 documented people mm -hmm. Uh, people who were raised from the dead. Well, what happened in the service when my mother-in-law was singing, a man died. Now, you're not supposed to die in <laughs> church. Sometimes you may feel like dying in church, but you're not supposed to die. Smith just quit preaching, left the platform, went to the man, brought him back from the dead, went back to the pulpit, carried on preaching. That was the kind of miracle anointing that uh, that we ha that I saw night after night after night. Mm -hmm. My father, a very funny story. My father had a friend who was in the healing line, and he had ulcers. 
He did not know that the man ahead of him also had ulcers. And Smith Wigglesworth was a, he looked almost like a boxer. Short, uh, stocky, uh, very aggressive. He believed that every sickness had a demonic origin. Yeah. And uh, when someone said, I have ulcers, he would hit them in the stomach, mm -hmm. not too kindly sometimes, and say, come out in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So the father, my, friend's, my father's friend was in the healing line with ulcers. The guy ahead of him had ulcers. In a very broad Yorkshire accent, what's up with ye? Not what's your problem, but what's up with ye? You know, of course, what that means. Yes. I have ulcers. Bang! Come out in Jesus' name. My father's friend didn't want to have that same kind of treatment, so what's up with ye? Uh, it's been hard. <laughs> he thought maybe he, could, punch. <laughs> maybe he could be saved from some of the uh, body work that, uh, that Smith Wigglesworth was used to. Yeah. On one occasion, he was staying at a friend's house, uh, a member of the church's house, and the husband of the, of the lady was not saved, and she said, Brother Smith, would you help me to pray that my, my husband will get saved? Smith Wiggins with heard from God. He said, look, don't make my bed in the morning. When your husband comes home from work, he, he's going to take a nap. Put him in my bed and don't, taint, don't, don't change the sheets. And I believe that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will be transferred from me to the sheets and your husband will get saved. The husband was vibrating under the power of God with conviction of the Holy Spirit because he was sleeping in Smith Wigglesworth's bed. Wow. That's the kind of anointing. Yeah. I heard the story that he would he would be in the train and walk down the, the train and people would fall out under the power of God because of the anointing of this. So, so when you asked me to, mm. to be the, the international ambassador, my, I, I can't believe it. Mm. What a thrill. What yeah. a privilege. It's a privilege for us, Roy, that you're actually going to take over that position. But tell me, for people who are watching, some people can be cynical and say, well, do you know, it's just a building. You know, it's just bricks and mortar. What would you say to people watching that we're trying to renovate this build, building and redig the wells in Smith Wigglesworth and we've got great plans for it to be an international Bible school and a museum. What would you say to people watching this interview, Roy? During the ministry of Jesus, he many times mentioned Moses, David, Elijah, and there was a memory, not for the personality, but for the, the anointing of leadership that they had. And so when we talk about the Boland Mission in, in Bradford, it's more than a building. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that as Terry has had the burden and the vision to turn this into a museum, but not just a museum, a revival training center where people can come from around the world and be trained in the fundamentals of Pentecost. I mean, we hear preaching about Pentecost, but we need to have the demonstration mm -hmm. of the yeah. Holy Spirit, not, yes. not just what you hear, mm -hmm. not just what you feel but what you see, the manifestation of the presence and the power. You see, the word glory is the visible, visible, physical manifestation of the presence of God. Now, the presence of God is in every service, but to see the visible manifestation of that presence, that's glory. And I believe that from that building that's been renovated and restored, there's going to be an anointing restored that men and women from around the world will come from America, from Canada, from New Zealand, from Australia, everywhere in the world and capture again the anointing that God gave to Swift Wigglesworth through the vision and the burden of Terry Quinn. God bless you, Terry. Roy, you thank my you prayer. so much. You know, Roy, I'm, I feel the presence of God Amen. even while we're talking Amen. here. There's such an anointing in this place. but. You know, we've talked before about the, the last prophecy. In 1947, yeah. Smith gave a prophecy. He talked about the first two moves of God, which was the charismatic movement, right. the word of faith movement. Right. And he said, he prophesied, when the word and the spirit right. come together, Amen. it will usher in the greatest end time revival. Amen. Starting in England, yeah. 
to Europe and across the world. Yep. Now I know, Roy, you're 84 years young. That's right. There's only two ages in Jesus, young and younger. That's right. So 84 years young, tell the people about your burden for England and you, how you believe that revival is about to be birthed. I went to England in 2004 to start a new church in my hometown. My father had pioneered 20 plus churches in that area. And I went there and Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel actually was in such, it was an intense opposition. But when I think of England, I think with sadness because I know what God had in mind. We went from 11 people to over 100 people in about a month's time. But Jezebel took over and the move of God was stymied. But the last page has not yet been written, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. In the last days, God promised I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, that's American flesh, Scottish flesh, uh -huh. English flesh, Irish flesh, Welsh flesh. God's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And I'm young enough to see again the outpouring of the Holy Spirit before Jesus comes. I'm going to be part of it. Amen. Amen. Roy, shall we pray for Amen. Britain? We haven't mentioned this gentleman yes, too. Yes, absolutely. That is a statue that's, but, but my son-in-law Benny Hinn gave to me of Smith Wigglesworth in a preaching mode. Wow. Amen. Let's pray for Amen. revival, Roy. Amen. For the UK. Amen. Father, we just stand upon your word tonight. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your promises are yea, and in Christ, amen, to the glory of God. Amen. By us. Yes. We want all things to be done for your glory. But here's a scripture that it says it's the glory of God by us. And Lord, Jesus promised to build his church. He does it through people. You've given to, to Terry Quinn the vision, the burden, to see a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, a restoration movement mm -hmm. of the anointed ministry of this man of God, Smith Wigglesworth. And I'm honored to be a part of it. Thank you, Father, for everything that's coming down the pike. In yes. the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Listen, folks, thanks for watching this amazing historical interview. And I hope that's answered many of your questions about renovating a building. This is not about a building. This is about getting behind a worldwide revival. We believe that God is speaking to us in these days. So please, if you can get behind us, call us, visit the website www.tswf.org.uk. It's going to come along your screen just in a few seconds. Please come along and give us a donation to get behind us so that we can renovate this building and bring in international speakers, international healing meetings. The vision we have is to bring the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit again to these shores of England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales and Europe and across the world, exactly what Smith Wigglesworth prophesied. I want to encourage my friends every pastor, every leader of great ministry. I'm asking you to get behind this ministry in memory of a man that had an anointing and who prophesied the last day revival. The Bible says Jesus is building the church, but he uses people. And Paul said, we cannot go unless we are sent. And ladies and gentlemen, it takes money, mega bucks to do what God wants us to do. But I believe that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous and it's going to happen with your help and mine. God bless you.